Hi, in uh, today's video I wanted to discuss uh, things like power consumption, how you can uh, save power with the NAS that you have already, or if you are thinking of getting a NAS, uh, picking the right one so that it's not uh, perhaps using too much power uh, for uh, your requirements. Uh, so the first thing I want to do before I go into the settings on the NAS is I'd like to uh, put up some information on things that can affect the power consumption of the NAS uh, that is not the QNAP itself. Um, so here we've got um, the drive power consumption from two different manufacturers with both hard drives and SSDs. Um, so here you can see with the WD Red and Red Plus, which is the sort of lower performance option out of their two options. They've got the Pro as well. Um, it only uses 4.8 watts uh, for the standard one, which spins at just over 5,000 RPM. Um, and you've got the Red Pro that spins at just over 7,000 RPM, uses 7.2 watts. So um, if you don't need a performance drive, um, you can get the um, sort of lower cost drive, which also saves you um, uh, power usage as well. Um, obviously, you can multiply these figures by the number of drives in your NAS. If you have our uh, TVS H1288X, for example, it could take eight of these drives. So when you take this um, power difference between the two drives and you multiply it by eight, it does start adding up to a significant amount, especially when you, say, do it over um, the, the lifespan of the NAS. It's going to be um, a lot of extra power. Um, as you go down through the Seagate options, um, I've highlighted something here with the Seagate options between the 4 and 8 terabytes. So the same series of drive with very similar performance. Um, the 4 terabyte only uses 9 watts, whereas the 8 terabyte uh, uses an extra watt of power. So depending even within the same series, um, some of the drives can use more power than um, different drives. So really make sure that you um, look at the different drives you want to use. Um, same with the SSDs. Um, so I've tried to pick here. These are just two SATA SSDs. I didn't go into the NVMe um, side of things. I mean, I didn't put idle figures as well, uh, simply because different manufacturers were putting things instead of in watts. They were doing it in amps. So rather than do all the calculations, I've just left them off for now. Uh, but here we've got the read and write figures uh, for the WD uh, Red SA500 and the Seagate Ironwolf 125, um, just to illustrate the difference between the, uh, the four terabyte options there uh, between those as well. Um, so I've also selected a um, series of uh, QNAP NAS just to show you the different options within the QNAP NAS themselves. Um, so I've started at the top with the TS233, uh, one of the lower power consumption NAS that we've got, which is the one I'll do a little demo on today with you. Um, so that one only uses just over 10 watts when fully operating, fully populated with drives, um, and less than half that when the hard drives have gone to sleep. As we start moving through the range and going up, you can see at the upper end of the spectrum here with the TVS H1288X, it's using just under 100 watts. Uh, now that would be with all eight three and a half inch drive base filled, four two and a half inch drive base filled, as well as two NVMe M.2 NVMe slots filled. Um, so it's going to use a significant um, amount of power. Um, so if you don't need um, that level of um, horsepower in a NAS. Um, you can always go with something else. You know, we do um, uh, smaller NAS, uh, we do less powerful NAS um, that are going to use a lot less power. So, for example, between the TVS H1288X and the TS473A, um, it's about a third of the power usage with the TS473A. Uh, we do 8 bay versions of that as well if you needed a larger one. Uh, obviously, we'll use a little bit more power, but not as much as the TVS H1288X. Um, I've also done a, a small cross-section here with just a couple of our um, rack mount units. Um, so the TS435XEU, one of the lowest power consumption ones we have, um, that only uses uh, just over 30 watts uh, fully populated. That's with uh, four three and a half inch hard drives and two M.2 NVMEs. Um, and it uses about nearly half that uh, when the uh, hard drives have gone to sleep. And the final one here is our quad core Celeron unit that's got redundant dual hot swap redundant power supplies. Uh, so it's still using less than a 60 watt light bulb when it's fully operating uh, with uh, eight hard drives in there um, all working together. Um, and when the hard drives are gone to sleep again, it uses about half uh, the, uh, the, the rated power. Uh, so I'd like to talk you through some of the settings there. So one of the ones I'll focus on first is the hard drive sleep uh, that I was talking about. Um, so if you go into the control panel on the QNAP, now this setting is on by default, but when you're in control panel, you'll see the hardware option at the top right. 
Uh, so when you go in there, there's a tick box. It's usually ticked by default, and this option will be set to 30 minutes. That's just under it. Uh, this is the disk standby mode. So this is saying that the uh, the hard drives will go to sleep after a period of 30 minutes of inactivity. Now, there are a few things that will stop that from ever working. Uh, for example, if you're running uh, certain things on your NAS uh, that run at intervals of less than 30 minutes, um, or you've got access constantly 24 hours throughout the day to your NAS, um, there's never a period where the NAS will be idle for 30 minutes, so it may never never go to sleep in some instances. Uh, so some examples of software that you can run on your NAS that will um, prevent this from ever working would be things like um, uh, surveillance software. So if you're running our QVR Pro or QVR Elite software, if it's recording cameras 24-7, um, the hard drives are never going to be idle to go to sleep. Um, same with something like a Plex media server, a DLNA media server, so you can set those to scan for new media, uh, things like that. So when they're doing their scans, obviously it's going to do disk activity, so it's going to prevent it from um, allowing the disks to go to sleep. Uh, so just be, just be mindful that this may not always work. It does depend on how you configure your NAS. Uh, this NAS is set up straight out the box, um, and while I've had it sat on my desk here, I've heard them spin down and spin up a couple of times as I've been, you know, taking a break for lunch and then coming back and clicking something again, then it's, they start spinning up. Uh, but you can audibly hear them spinning down and spinning up usually um, if you're within earshot of your NAS. Uh, so this is uh, one option that you can use. Um, we do also have a smart fan, so this is just really make sure your NAS is in a well-ventilated location. The normal mode should be all anybody needs. We do have an option that uses a little less power. Um, on a small unit like this TS233 with a single fan, um, it's really not going to make any difference to power consumption. But larger units with multiple fans, um, you, you could save a couple of watts potentially by spinning the fans a bit slower. Um, so you can set it down to quiet mode. Uh, just make sure that um, the NAS doesn't get too hot. It's going to start popping up alerts at you if, if anything in there does get too hot so you can ramp it back up again. Uh, but normal mode will work for most. Um, if the NAS gets hot, it spins them faster. If it's cool enough, it spins them slower. But as I say, you can take over a bit of control or absolutely just set the uh, the fan speed manually if you wish as well. Um, so that's the uh, disk, uh, disk standby mode or disk sleep function that a lot of drive makers will talk about when the, the drives go idle. Um, so that's, the, that's how you would uh, enable that feature. Now the next setting down um, in the control panel here under hardware is power. So in power, the first thing we're going to see here um, is the EUP mode configuration. So this is um, EUP stands for energy using products. Um, it's a directive, a directive uh, by the European Union um, designed to improve energy efficiency. So by default, most QNAPs will have this set to disable. Now, this is effectively going to mean that your QNAP, if it's plugged into power, will use just over one watt of power. Uh, this is enabling a few functions to work, which are the three functions that we've got listed here. Things like wake on LAN, power recovery, so that's what happens if the power fails and then comes back, what does your NAS do, as well as power schedule. If you have this set to enable, so you've enabled the EUP mode configuration, it will in effect uh, stop uh, these three settings from working. So any settings that you've got in there will just not work if this is set to the enabled option. Uh, so whilst this is going to use some power, I generally recommend having this on disable and using a combination of the other features to actually save more power. Um, so one of the options here is power schedule. So if there are certain times in a day when you will never use your NAS, uh, for the most part, you can enable the schedule. So with this setup here, I could say have my NAS to do the action of shutdown every day um, let's say at 10 o'clock at night. I won't be using my NAS after 10 o'clock at night, so I can set that up there. I can then also add um, a complementary rule here, such as turn on the server every day at 7 a.m. So I know I'm going to need my NAS up and running again, so while I'm sleeping, uh, my NAS is gonna be uh, powered down, turned off, and uh, really just using that one watt of power uh, that the EUP mode configuration is enabling it. Um, but this is going to allow my NAS to effectively not use power with this setup, um, for nine hours. Um, so it's going to use just that one watt of power for the nine hours rather than uh, potentially the 10 watts it might use when being turned on. Um, so the power schedule is a, a really uh, great option to use if you can get around uh, using it. If you if you know that there are, there are certain times in a day where you will not need the NAS to be powered on. Um, now these aren't um, uh, 
unbroken rules, if you like. If you decide that 11 p.m. after your NAS has already turned off, that you actually do still need to use it, you do want to do something on the NAS, you can just walk up to the NAS, push the power button. It will turn on. It will take a couple of minutes to, to boot up. But once the NAS is uh, powered on, you can use it. And this power schedule will still work. It will just ignore the wake up at 7 a.m. Uh, option that you've got here and it'll just turn off at the next off time because it would already be on at 7 a.m. if you left it on. You can of course turn it on at say 11 p.m. and then uh, manually shut it down here at midnight. Um, then the turn on server at 7 a.m. would still uh, take effect. Now if you're not near your NAS but you are in the same network, uh, so for me I have a, a lot of my NAS are in the rack cabinet in the garage. Um, so if I ever need to turn on a NAS that's out there, I'm um, sure I could walk out to the garage and go do that. Or what I can do is I can use um, a Wake on LAN feature uh, that we have. Um, so Wake on LAN is over here. It's Again, it's enabled by default. Um, it doesn't generally work on all Ethernet ports on some QNAPs. So if it's a SFP plus port, it generally won't work. If it's a um, port added in with a, a PCI Express card, it also will not work. It has to be usually one of the onboard ports. Uh, so on this TS233, it's only got a uh, single um, Ethernet port, it's on board, it does support Wake on LAN. Uh, so for this one, I can turn it on. Um, to turn on um, a QNAP using uh, Wake on LAN, you can use any Wake on LAN client out there that you want, um, or just use the QFinder Pro software that we supply for free. Um, so any NAS that's ever been discovered in the software uh, can be woken up. So there's a button at the top right here with the little sort of uh, power plug symbol on it. Uh, if you click that, it's going to show every QNAP that it's ever found, not just the ones that it's currently uh, seeing in the list that are turned on. But you can go through this list here and you can turn on any NAS. So here, if I wanted to turn on the uh, TVS-H1288X that I do a lot of these videos on, um, I can just highlight it there and I can click Wake Up. And it's going to send a Wake on LAN packet across my network to turn that on. Uh, now, in the case of this one, I've got mine connected with one of the 2.5 gig onboard LAN ports, so that would work. Uh, if I'd connected it with the uh, 10 gig port that comes with the, H, uh, the TVS H1288X, um, I would not be able to wake it up using that port because it's a PCI Express card uh, based port. So if it's one of the onboard ones, um, you're able to wake it up from here. Uh, so that's uh, the, the remote wake up feature. Um, so it only works in the same LAN. There are a few notes here. Um, so it's only going to work if it's a PC in the same LAN. Um, it's wake on LAN, not wake on WAN. You can't wake it up from across the internet um, with this software. Um, some routers may have um, a wake on LAN feature in them. So if you can remotely access your router that's in your network where your QNAP is, uh, you can tell your router to send the wake on LAN packet sometimes. So that's sometimes an option that you can use uh, to turn it on. It's exactly the same thing as walking up to the QNAP and pushing the power button. It just turns it on. Um, and just while we're here, I'll cover off power recovery. So this is uh, just two options. Um, so imagine that the power failed uh, and your QNAP was on. Uh, when the power comes back, this is going to restore the previous NAS power state. So if it was on before the power failed, um, it's going to turn it back on. Um, so for me personally, I generally say keep the NAS turned off. Um, just as a rule, when power goes off and then comes back, uh, quite a lot, it doesn't always just come back and stay on. It might go off, on, off, on a couple of times. Uh, in my area anyway. So for me, I generally set it to keep the NAS turned off. I'll turn it back on when I'm sure the power's um, been back on long enough to be considered stable. Uh, but that's just uh, the other options that you've got. Um, so if anybody has any questions on any of these settings, uh, please do let me know. Um, I find the power schedule feature probably the most useful at saving power. Um, so I do have a, a backup NAS. Um, I only let it uh, turn on for about an hour a day, uh, a half hour before my backup job runs from my main NAS. Um, and then it, uh, it turns off again about a half an hour after the backup job runs. Um, I've checked the backup job. My backup job generally finishes in less than 10 minutes. Um, so that's usually plenty of time. Uh, and I give it a half an hour to do the full wake up. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the different power options. Uh, hopefully that helps uh, help someone out there to use a little bit less power um, uh, with your NAS. Um, but again, one of the most important things is just make sure you size the NAS correctly. Um, don't get one that's necessarily uh, too powerful with really fast drives if all you're using it for is a backup target once, uh, once a day. Uh, you could potentially go with something that uses uh, a lot less power uh, with slower drives and it's going to perform the exact same function, but use a massive amount less power throughout the years. Okay, um, again, if anybody has any questions, please do get in touch with us in the comments section down below and we'll do our best to uh, get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot, bye.